There we go. So I think that's it then, right? Yep. Yes. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Like I said, this is my uh, first remote PowerPoint presentation. Um, again, it's great to be here and um, I appreciate the opportunity to, to uh, meet with all of you and to hone, and to hone these skills. Um, like I said, I'm the executive director of the Central New York uh, Land Trust and uh, we're a nearly 50 year old organization uh, here, um, here in Central New York. The Central New York Land Trust, it seeks uh, to preserve and protect natural areas in our community in order to provide communities with clean air, clean water, wildlife habitat, and really a chance to uh, connect with the land. And, and we've seen in the midst of this COVID crisis, um, our preserves have, um, you know, we have 46 of them. We've had a uh, bumper crop of, uh, of, of, of visitors to our preserves. Our parking areas are overflowing. Um, it's exciting, but it's also, um, it's a little daunting because there's a little pressure on some of the neighbors because we have, um, we have uh, um, uh, you know, folks are parking along the street because they just, um, they just want to get into, uh, uh, they just want to get into, um, to, uh, to, to, to uh, get outside. Um, so we were founded in 1972. Um, we're a member and donor supported nonprofit land conservation organization. We have a service area. It's the uh, watersheds of um, the lakes that are in Onondaga and Oswego County. It's a 1,750 mile uh, service area. Um, and we're supported in part by over 350 organizations, individuals, and families. Um, some people may remember us as um, Save the County. You know, there were some walks that were done probably, gosh, it must be maybe 30 years ago now, um, where elementary school kids were, were, uh, were, uh, were, were raising money uh, to help us purchase land. They helped us purchase uh, Baltimore Woods. Um, so we have 46 preserves. Uh, we started with uh, Baltimore Woods and Old Fly Marsh. Um, these are both uh, great uh, preserves. I don't know if you folks have visited out at, at, at uh, Baltimore Woods, but it's um, great interpretation and uh, they're a great partner. Uh, we're the sixth largest land trust in New York State. Um, we, uh, we, we just opened new offices in uh, downtown Skinny Atlas. I don't, if you're familiar with it, we're in, we're in view of Doug's Fish Fry. Uh, we're at 7 Fennel Street. Um, we have three staff and a 14-member board and 147 volunteers. It's um, I am I am I am humbled by the enthusiasm that folks have for organization, and um, it's a real esprit de corps in the volunteer group. And it's um, it not only do they get a lot of work done, but it seems like they have a lot of fun as well. So, in terms of the work of the land trust. Um, Three main areas. We have land protection, land stewardship, and education and outreach. Um, in terms of land protection, we do project identification. So we have our 46 preserves, and then um, we, we look to enhance those existing uh, uh, preserves by acquiring more land and or, and or acquiring uh, conservation easements. I don't know if folks are familiar with the concept of a conservation easement, but Property is a bundle of rights, and that bundle of rights um, you can purchase any portion of it. So, like if you have a if you have a house in uh, Manlius, it goes from this. Your property goes um, if you own it all. It goes from the center of the earth through your property line and out into the atmosphere. And um, what a conservation easement does is it sells a portion of that bundle of rights. It's usually the ability to to uh, to do certain uh, development activities or and or some commitment to um, to maintain the site with some level of environmental function. Also in land protection, uh, they do we do fundraising um, of both uh, gifts of uh, cash and assets and gifts of land. We have a current campaign going on. Um, it's the campaign for the future. Uh, that's a five a million dollar campaign. About half of that is earmarked for stewardship. About um, half of what's left of that is earmarked for acquisition. Uh, also, as part of land protection, we have our uh, due diligence, and part of that is doing title and survey work. We always have to make sure 
that land that we're buying, um, the person we're buying it from, that they own it. And then um, sometimes we have um, uh, we have over enthusiastic neighbors who um, lose track of where property boundaries are. And then sometimes we have to resurvey properties um, to remind folks um, about where um, their yard stops and where public where the where the public green space uh, begins. And then the whole process terminates in a purchase um, and a celebration. Uh, Again, we have 46 uh, preserves. We're always looking for opportunities to enhance our, um, our holdings here in central New York. In terms of land stewardship, we really manage for watershed management and species uh, diversity. We, we uh, look to uh, maintain um, the recreational components of our property. This is where the core part of our volunteers are. Uh, we have, like I said, 147 volunteers that help us with land stewardship. They work on trail maintenance, boundary posting, um, uh, over at Three Falls Woods. Uh, they helped us put in a new parking area with, um, with some new boulders to um, encourage people to park in the parking area. They help us with monitoring our preserves. We're right now going for accreditation and um, uh, as a requirement of accreditation, you have to visit all of your preserves at least once a year. And then we have reports and we look at, um, you know, boundary conflicts and invasive species and uh, sightings of rare and endangered species. Um, and then we uh, collate all that information and it informs our management for the following year. Um, also as part of that, we look at our signs and kiosks in our existing uh, preserves and, um, and we, we, we like to keep those current and accurate. Um, in terms of education outreach, we have a really exciting, and I'll touch more on it a little bit later in my presentation, we're working on a watershed education center. It has two components. It has a center um, where uh, we have a lot of watershed, uh, watershed information, and then we have a remote site that's an outdoor watershed education center, and that's a place where individuals and groups can go and see uh, best practices. Um, we also host uh, preserve walks and hikes, and uh, we host those probably, I mean, in the summer months, we probably do them maybe twice a month, um, and in the winter, we probably do one or two in the whole winter. Um, we have, um, we do educational speakers, and we'll be doing more and more of that as we have opportunities to, uh, to assemble again in the future, which I'm sure, I'm sure we will. Um, and then... Um, and then the last piece is trying to create the next generation of, of uh, conservationists, because not only are we a land conservation organization, but we're really trying to build a, a community of conservationists. And so um, like when, when, when uh, COVID kicked in, we, we tried to reach out to some of our more uh, mature members to say, hey, we're here, and if you need anything, let us know, even if it's outside of the scope of land conservation, because we're really... Um, at, at the very core, we're a community of people who care about the environment, and, um, and of course, we care about people. So Three Falls Woods, this is kind of an awesome story. We have an we have a awesome, uh, very generous donor named Harold Jones, and then we have um, um, Manlius Green Space and, um, and a, a lot of other really concerned um, activists and uh, Three Falls Woods is in the Manlius and uh, DeWitt area. Um, it's a 78 acre uh, preserve. There's these three really beautiful waterfalls. Um, the uh, the property's probably been one of our most popular since the whole COVID-19. Uh, we get great stories about full parking lots and um, really breathtaking waterfalls. Um, here's a picture of the falls at Three Falls Woods. Um, you know. Wow, um, you know, places like that just inspire um, all of our work. We're, we're, we're really grateful to have such an incredible place. Um, here's some shots of the, uh, of the woods themselves. And then here's the new parking area with the uh, traffic control devices. Some might call them boulders. Um, and then there's a new butterfly garden that has gone in out there. Um, which we can't wait to see it come back to life this spring. Um, we brought in um, 
really a great story. We were leading a hike and you sort of, you know, we lead hikes to build, build a community and we, you know, to meet the neighbors and find folks that are interested in, in our conservation. And so we had a, we had a, a weekend hike and we assembled out. Um, it was before the parking area was even in, or I, I guess the, the gravel part was, was, was roughed in. We probably had about 23 people come and join us on the hike. And at the time we needed some fill and that was gonna be about $4,000 and we needed boulders and that was gonna be a couple thousand dollars and we needed a kiosk and that was gonna be about $10,000. And we were, um, we were wondering how we were gonna make all that happen. And at the one hike, we got free fill dirt um, for the butterfly garden. We, um, we met this fellow Edwin who builds beautiful staircases. And um, he said, well, if you need kiosks, I'm, you know, I'm really good with, 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 with uh, woodworking. So he actually offered to build us um, five kiosks for our, um, for our, our, our preserves with the most visitorship. And then, um, and then we had a mystery um, uh, rock installation. Uh, I, I, uh, a local person who just wanted to be kind uh, dropped off and placed those, those boulders for us to protect all the work in the butterfly garden. So it's really, um, it's really been this great community outpouring, you know, between um, Harold and Manliest Green Space and other donors helping us buy the property. And then um, we put the parking area in and then all the teamwork to get the garden and boulders and kiosk in. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled by people's enthusiasm for it. Um, here's some more shots of, uh, of the falls. Um, they're, um, I would imagine with all the rain we've had, there's some great opportunities uh, to see those. And they're just spectacular, really beautiful. Um, in terms of some of our special places, we have um, uh, Tracy Lake, and that's in the southern portion of our service area. It's about 79 acres. And those trails are, are really easy walking, which is nice. Um, if, uh, if someone had uh, a little bit of limited mobility, there's probably some opportunity there to walk around. Um, there's, uh, of course, there's the lake and there's wetlands, there's wooded areas uh, and the Kettle Pond. It's, um, if you haven't seen it, it's worth a trip and you can go on our website for, for specific directions. Um, great, uh, there, there's uh, great, great, uh, great mushrooms out there. Um, there's a shot of the pond, beautiful fall color, some of the hiking trails. Um, a place that's near and dear to my heart um, is our Baltimore Woods uh, Nature Preserve. Um, it's in the Marcellus area. It's 175 acres and we do that in partnership with the Baltimore Woods Nature Center. It's really exciting right now. We're working on expanding the uh, Baltimore Woods Nature Center by uh, at least the land around it by almost 50%. Um, it's, um, it's really, um, you know, in terms of the kids that are served and the individuals that are served, they have great summer programs and summer camps. They have um, really wonderful trail system, unbelievably uh, conscientious staff. And um, we're looking at acquiring, or we have, um, we have 90 acres adjacent to it under contract and um, we have three years to raise the funds to help pay for that. We, um, we've raised about half of that so far. And um, it's just a great opportunity to, um, for outdoor recreation here in central New York. They have um, really wonderful uh, developed trail system uh, with, with, with uh, bridges, great bird watching. I think that's, um, I think that's an Eastern Kingbird. Um, and then um, uh, we have another awesome uh, a preserve out in, in uh, Manlius on Woodchuck Hill Road. I don't know how, I imagine everyone's on the call is familiar with Wood, Woodchuck Hill Road. Um, it was donated by Beryl Digney and the Nature Conservancy. It's approximately 94 acres, um, fields, forest, uh, uh, to historic homes in a barn, um, really pretty views of um, of Snooks Pond, and of course uh, 
Horse Creek, going into Snooks Pond. And then it was exciting. I don't know how many folks are familiar um, with Earth Day, but it was the um, 50th anniversary of Earth Day. And we were, you know, we were chatting with some folks and um, we were chatting with uh, our friends over at Baltimore Woods and they're like, you know, we think it would be exciting to plant 50 trees for the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. And we said, wow, that is an incredible idea. And we said, uh, would you mind if we did the same thing? And they said, no, they would be flattered by that um, uh, it, if, if we thought it was such a good idea that, that, we, that we took it on as well. So we, um, we, we decided to plant um, 50 trees for the 50th anniversary of, um, of, of Earth Day. We planted uh, 25 red oaks out along uh, the road and then the remainder of the trees in a new forest um, along uh, the forest edge. Um, we decided to um, have an adopt a tree program and those trees um, for $500 a tree, they can be adopted and then uh, you can um, you can do it in in a memory of someone or as a as a gift we were we were suggesting Valentine's Day gifts or birthday presents um, it was um we still have a, a few of those left but it's really as the trees come in uh, to their own it's really going to be quite uh, quite an enhancement out there um, we had uh, really fun um, because it we couldn't have a big Earth Day. We did a virtual Earth Day, and so my wife and I and our son came out, and uh, and with with a little bit of help of an auger and a couple volunteers, we we planted the 25 red oaks, and um, here's one of the red oaks going in. Um, my son's a bit of a cameraman, so he was very kind and shot this video, um, and you can see uh, you can see it going in. Um, it's in uh, fast frame. It was really rocky, unbelievably rocky. Um, and we stepped it in, put the rocks back around it, and then claimed victory. <laughs> so uh, that was our first, we did it on Facebook Live, and that was our first uh, foray into, uh, into uh, virtual land conservation activities. Um, let's see, why isn't that? Um, so, um, uh, so in terms of Earth Day, I don't know if folks uh, realize, but the um, it, the first one was in 1970, and um, it was U.S. Senator uh, from Wisconsin who who uh, put it together, uh, Gaylord Nelson. Um, in 10% uh, of the total population of the country in 1970 participated in the first Earth Day. It was like a it was like a watershed moment in 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 a, in a conservation. And people took to the streets and parks and had all kinds of different celebrations. Um, by the 1990s, it it it, it went global, and um, and uh, and you know uh, has there was over 200 million participants in in uh, 1990 and um, uh, trying to bring environmental issues to the world stage. And then um, in 2000. Uh, the issues of global climate change started to come in and clean energy. Uh, they had over 5,000 in uh, environmental groups uh, participate. Um, and, you know, uh, today Earth Day is widely recognized as the largest secular observance in the world. Is that amazing? So it's, um, it's bigger than Thanksgiving um, and uh, bigger than Valentine's Day. So it's the largest secular observance. There's more than a billion people every year that come uh, to action for Earth Day. And um, we were thrilled to be at least a little part of it. So land conservation, uh, that's, our, that's our core, that's our core activity. Um, we're working on uh, land acquisition out in uh, Pleasant Valley, which is in the town of Onondaga on Pleasant Valley Road. Um, we're working on creating almost a 300 acre preserve. This new acquisition is um, 203 acres and it sews together a few parcels that we had that didn't have the best access. And uh, by purchasing this 203 acre parcel, it links them together and really creates a great resource um, for the community. It's the largest, it'll be the largest park closest to downtown Syracuse 
except for maybe two. Um, and there it allows for biking and cross country skiing and uh, and hiking and dogs on leash. It's really it's really awesome. Uh, it's the former Cedar Vale Maple Syrup Company land. Um, we're still doing uh, some maple syrup operations out there, and we still have um, a small Christmas tree plot. Um, we're in our current campaign uh, to to raise funds to 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 uh, save the land. Um, here's a here's an aerial map. You can see. Uh, where the proposed uh, preserve is out on Pleasant Valley Road. There's a wonderful uh, pond on the property, <clears throat> um, along with a great uh, stream corridor. There's beavers, there's all kinds of different uh, wildlife out there. Um, here's a good shot of the uh, Eastern Bluebird, folks out cross country skiing, the fall colors on, on on, um, on a portion of the preserve. Um, there's uh, a wonderful overlook. There's, you know, there's always something going on. I've, I've been out there and seen turkeys and uh, there's always activity with the movement of water through the site. It's on um, the west branch of Onondaga Creek. And it's actually one of the few unimpaired waterways that feed into Onondaga Lake. So it's, um, it's a great regional resource. We have um, here, I'll share a little, uh, some, uh, <clears throat> let's see, let's go to full screen. There we go. So there you can see the pond and the stream. It's really spectacular. And there's a wonderful walking trail through it. Um, there's a, uh, um, there's a hillside that has a great uh, sugar maple grove on it, which you can see here in the middle of the screen. Albert, we're not seeing it, really? at least I'm not. Oh, really? Um, I think you're showing um, the, the PowerPoint rather than the screen at this point. Um, let's see. Um, Sharing, bring bring your shared video to the front. Let's see. Um, pause, bring your new share, resume share. Um, let's see, should I try it one more time? Sure. I'll try it again. So can you see it now on the screen? No. No, I see a lot of other heads. Here, hold on a second. No. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. share in the chat. So should we do that? Yep. Yeah, I can find the link on YouTube. Okay. So it's not... No, right huh? now we are seeing you. Okay. Good. All right. Well, um, I don't know why that didn't work. So, uh, ba -ba. let's go back to um, view uh, slideshow. Uh, 
Uh, let me get back. It's a really pretty uh, video, but I apologize that it didn't work. Uh, so, um, so if you're interested, if anyone's interested, you can go to our website and learn more about the Pleasant Valley, uh, the campaign to save Pleasant Valley. Um, and now on to our um, Watershed Education Center. Um, we're, we've developed um, at our offices at 7 Fennel Street, um, 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 a new Watershed Education Center. We partnered up with the Community Foundation of Central New York, Lockheed Martin, uh, Skinny Atlas Lake Association, Onondaga County Soil and Water Conservation District, SUNY ESF, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and the Nature Conservancy. And it's really, um, it's an opportunity to demonstrate best practices, create awareness of issues facing watersheds. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Um, and uh, um, we're in the process, probably by the time the, uh, the, the corona, um, by the time restrictions are lifted, um, we'll have the, uh, we'll, we'll be finished certainly with the, um, with the, uh, um, with the project at 7 Fennel Street, and we'll be well, well on our way to, um, to uh, our, the Outdoor Water Education Center at, at, at High Hickory. Um, there's a shot of the outside of the 7 Fennel Street sign, and then um, a map that shows um, the, uh, uh, the, the driveway and parking area and gate out at High Hickory. Um, the, uh, the educational kiosks out by the parking area. And then we're gonna put in some best practices. We're not seeing your in. presentation anymore. Oh, really? We uh, just see you. Okay, let's it's see. The screen with all the participants. Here, hold on a second. Hello? There we go. Share your screen. Share. Uh, view. View slideshow. Um, can you see it now? Yes. 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 Oh. Uh, Let's see. Sorry, getting back to where we were. Earth Day. Okay. Pleasant Valley. So the Watershed Education Center. And so, uh, can you see it now? Yes. Yes. Um, so, um, so if, if you look at the drawing, you can see, uh, the new proposed driveway and parking area, and then, uh, we'll have some, uh, we'll put in an educational kiosk and the, and the stone seating wall in the parking area. Um, we'll have, um, we'll have a corduroy bridge and that's a, a best practice for stream crossing where there's, um, uh, where you have, want to have low impact. Um, we're taking two fields and uh, treating for invasive species and planting warm season grasses. And then in the stream corridor, um, as the stream uh, floods and then dries out, um, we're gonna create uh, depressions, which, um, which, um, which will um, uh, flood and then they'll be able to uh, slow um, both, both uh, nutrients and water into um, into Skinny Atlas Lake, and so um, we're going to do those rural ponds in in, um, in cooperation with U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and then we're going to work on some stream bank stabilization. So we'll take um, large uh, woody debris and stuff it into the stream corridor, and that'll again slow the water course and cause uh, uh, silt to fall out of the you know slow things down, cause silt to fall out, and then do some uh, wetland uh, plant planting. Um, 
really exciting project. We actually just got started on that this past Monday. Um, we're um, we're uh, doing some survey work, and then uh, and then things will really get going in in earnest out there. Um, in terms of ways uh, to get involved, um, if you have really good technical skills, you could you could uh, train me on on virtual presentations. But um, I think we're doing all right today. Um, you can become a member. We're a membership-based organization. Uh, we have about 225 members now. We're always looking for, uh, for more. Um, you could make a, um, a plan gift as part of your estate planning with your estate uh, planning officer. We have, um, we have a couple right now that's really exciting. They're uh, looking into giving us their house. Um, so they have, um, they have a, a, a house here in central New York and um, uh, where they had their professional life and they had a, a place on the Cape and they're looking at um, giving their house here in central New York to the organization. We're going to use it as part of our stewardship endowment. So that's really exciting. Uh, we have some folks who do, um, who do IRA distributions um, and that's real easy to do. And we're happy to coordinate with anybody's financial advisor uh, to do that. You can, um, you can uh, donate land. Um, we're always looking for to increase our holdings. You can visit our website at cnylandtrust.org for more information. Um, in terms of other ways uh, to get involved, uh, you can volunteer, you could uh, become a committee member, you could get be part of a fundraiser, uh, join us for a special event. We're still scheduled to have our annual garden tour at the summer solstice, I think that's June 22nd. Um, we haven't canceled that yet. And so we're, 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 we're hoping that when um, the restrictions are lifted, it might be one of those first events that um, we can enjoy um, with some pent up uh, demand. There's becoming a land steward, which you, um, you know, find a, a preserve that's close to your home, and then you, um, you, you monitor it for the organization over time. And then um, social media help. We're always working on Facebook and Twitter and, um, and you know, the, all the different platforms in terms of keeping in touch with folks uh, digitally. Um, and I guess the big thing to remember is um, whether you want to do a little or a lot, we can use your help. So, um, you know, when uh, you could do it from home now or when the restrictions are lifted, we have um, we have great offices in downtown Skinny Atlas. And, you know, we're always looking um, to have uh, more folks be part of our mission. Um, so. I want to thank everyone for their patience. Are there any questions? <laughs>